and welcome to Ageless Tailoress. In today's video, I will be showing you the process of me making my 1780s stays. These are them. More proper pictures of them being worn will be at the end of the video. Um, I use the red threaded 1780s stays pattern and some red linen. Everything that I use to make the stays will be linked in the description box, and I hope you enjoy. The first step in the stay making process was to cut the strength layer, for which I chose a simple cotton canvas from Joann's, then using a pencil and ruler, I marked the lines for the boning channels. I then pinned the strength layer to the fashion layer, for which I chose a red linen from Renaissance Fabrics. You'll notice I am not cutting out the fashion layer precisely. The reason for this is that it will make the next step, sewing the boning channels, easier, because I will not have to make sure the layers match up exactly. The excess will be pinned away after the channels are sewn. The two layers are then ironed and pinned together in preparation for sewing the boning channels. The boning channels are then sewn using a contrasting white thread. <laughs> 
I then pinned together the fronts, sides, and back pieces and did a quick fit session. I ended up taking in the front seams about one inch, tapering down to the original seam line at the waist, as well as taking in the back seam by three fourths of an inch in a similar manner, as well as shortening the top of the stays by five eighths of an inch. After the seams were sewn, I ironed the seams open and trimmed the seam allowance down to an even one half of an inch. Now it was time for perhaps the most tedious process of making the stays, boning them. I used a mix of 7mm and 6mm plastic whalebone, which is plastic boning made to mimic the properties of actual baleen, otherwise known as whalebone, which for obvious environmental reasons is no longer readily available. I used a mix of the two sizes merely because I did not have enough of one size to bone the entire stays. I used tin snips to cut the bones to size as well as an acrylic file to file the ends so they wouldn't poke through the fabric. After all the bones were inserted, I pinned on the white bias binding to the stays, 
and sewed it on my machine with a 1 4th inch seam allowance. Before the top of the stays could be bound, the straps had to be sewn on, and in my earlier fitting, I knew that they had to be shortened by 2 inches. The bias binding was then pinned onto the top of the stays and sewn by machine with a 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. The seam allowance was then trimmed to 1 8 of an inch and the binding ironed to the other side. The bias binding after being ironed was then whip stitched to the interior of the stays. After the eyelet spacing was adjusted, I used an awl to punch holes for the eyelets and white buttonhole twists to sew around them until the raw edges were covered. <laughs> 
The final step in the stain making process was to sew the eyelets, but before I did that, I had to adjust the eyelet placement because I wanted my stays to lace using the spiral method, while the placement of the eyelets given by the pattern was meant for crisscross lacing.